Hey, uh, it's been a long time since I've done a 3D printer video and uh, kind of had my hands full with other stuff. Um, doesn't mean I'm not still progressing on this, but uh, I've been, every time I do get some, to carve out a few hours to play with it, um, I've been failing a lot of prints. And so basically, here's a, a, the bottom of a case that I've been trying to print for my Aztec X3 Pro over there. And essentially, I get about 30 minutes into the print and it jams up. So I've done some reading. I've kind of had this problem for a while, but just sort of ignoring it and not really addressing it. Um, I'm on an E3D V5 hot end, which obviously I did some videos about before. Um, and I'm just really not having luck with it, unfortunately. I don't really want to buy another one. So kind of my last ditch effort here is to, uh, to try the seasoning procedure that everybody claims works, um, at least for a while. Um, so I'll see if that'll help me out and maybe at least prove that it is the hot end. I'm pretty sure it's not the extruder giving me problems because it can push really hard, but it still jams up and uh, kind of just runs out and makes these little blobby things uh, here and there. But anyway, uh, you know, a print like that size is fine. It's just, it, uh, you know, like that size is fine. It's just eventually I, I jam up when I'm on these longer prints and that's sort of what I need to do to get the printer finished up. So um, this video is going to be about the seasoning procedure and uh, we'll see if it works. Hopefully I'll do some prints before they conclude this video and uh, tell you if it works or not. All right, so you can start the seasoning process off by taking a small piece of PLA and heating your hot end up to the melting temp of your PLA. So I'm gonna push some through manually. This is with the Bowden tube disconnected, just to make sure we have a good solid bit in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that hot end and let it cool down to room temperature. Alright, so once you're at room temperature, you can turn the extruder back on and put some slight pressure in the upward direction on your filament. And as soon as it heats up, it should just come right out without stretching too much. And you end up with this nice little plug looking thing that is uh, the shape of your extruder. If you do it just right, you can see sometimes on the very, very end of it, that you can see the last uh, diameter of your nozzle in there and that's how you know you really got it cleaned all the way out but this is good enough just to get any excess plastic out of there you can also inspect this to see if your transition is really well seated because you'll see a little uh, a little seam there where it kind of pokes out a little bit so um, anyway take a look at that and just just know what you're looking at a little bit there okay so now that it's clean Heat it up to about the melting temp of your uh, PLA, which on mine is 210 on this one. Um, some people say do it at about 180, 190, but I think as long as you don't get it too hot, you should be good. Um, and so I've got some olive oil here. You can use canola as well. So I'm just going to use whoa, use a piece of this, dip it in there real good, get it all rolled around, and basically. Feed that right through. And extrude it. And just extrude a good bit and that oil should, uh, should clean right out of there and it's going to season the metal. It should keep the uh, sugars in the PLA from sticking to the stainless, so I'm told. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that same procedure one more time. So I'll turn off the hot end, let it cool all the way down, heat it up again while pulling on it, clean all that out, do it again, do it maybe a few times, and uh, we'll see if that improves the, the jamming issue. Uh, hopefully I will try to print something large here soon and, uh, and report back my findings. Once you've done a few cycles, just purge 50 or 100 millimeters of uh, filament through. It should clean out all the excess oil to make sure it doesn't contaminate your prints.
All right, about four and a half, five hours later maybe, uh, finally finished the bottom half of the Aztec X3 Pro case after seasoning the uh, E3D hot end with PLA. It was having a lot of jamming problems and basically it seems to have solved them in the first try. So that's, that's really good. I hate that I had to even mess with it and read about it and all of that, but uh, apparently it works a lot better with ABS than it does PLA, but I'm just happy that I finally got this thing done. It's kind of renewed my interest in this 3D printer. It kind of crept away a little bit. It was it was hard to devote uh, time to it when you're getting like failed prints all the time and stuff like that. It's just when you don't expect success, it's hard to put the time in. So uh, hopefully I'll put some more videos out pretty soon. Uh, I've got a lot of like more functional kind of prints coming on. Uh, other than just the uh, printer upgrades and stuff like that that I have been doing. So, uh, anyway, I did have a few uh, issues with this print. Uh, a couple of kind of almost filament starvation issues. Maybe the flow rate needs adjusted or something like that. So I'm going to try to address those problems. And uh, this is a perfectly usable piece, though, assuming I don't break it getting off the bed. Uh, I have been using this uh, Elmer's glue, glue stick on blue painter's tape. So I know there's some other methods of doing that. I kind of tried many, many times, many times, or temp bed temperatures, uh, melting temperatures, all that, and I just couldn't find anything that would work without a glue or an adhesive of some type. So probably I'll try some hairspray at some point too, but this has been working great. It makes good adhesion. Uh, it's not terribly messy and it doesn't stay sticky when you touch it. It just makes a nice sticky thing. The only problem is sometimes it takes the tape up with the part, so uh, as long as you have a nice big roll, eh, it's alright. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I will catch you next time.